Okay, welcome to the scalping webinar. I'm excited to show you guys this stuff. We're gonna be going over three different scalping methods today. Um, we're gonna to be going over my personal uh, method that I've developed over the past couple uh, weeks and uh, really over the past month or so, um, which is surgical scalping. Uh, we're gonna do some EMA scalping, some hyper scalping, uh, and of course, we're gonna do um, well, I say of course, but I'm also going to throw in a fourth method as a bonus, which is called PEPO, and uh, that is price in and price out. So let's see here. All right. Now, again, as I said, if for some reason the connection becomes unstable with my broadband, the recording will capture all of my um, all of my voice. So. Don't worry if you miss something because, I, like I said, the connection is unstable, but I'll get everything on the recording and then I'll upload that to the Telegram channel, which I'll be giving you guys uh, at the end of this, and that'll have, uh, that'll have the recording along with a bunch of other uh, stuff that I think you guys will really dig. So if you do not have a pen and paper with you, now is a good time because I'm about to roll the disclaimer, um, which I am required to by law. So I'm gonna have to put this up for about 30 seconds. You know, Forex, risk, lots involved, stuff like that. Okay, and of course this is only for educational purposes. Wink! All right. Now, um, a couple shout outs I'd like to get out of the way real quick. Um, I couldn't have done any of this without uh, the help of uh, a lot of people that have helped me and mentored me along the way. Like um, we've got, of course, uh, Wakar, who has uh, taught me everything he knows about price action and about pivot scalping. Um, and then we also have another Wakar on Instagram whose handle is EMAs Don't Work. He and another guy, Rakeel, his handle is Wix Don't Lie are part of a group called the Forex family. And when we get done, I highly recommend you guys check them out. Uh, he also has a, a YouTube channel called Wix Don't Lie. And they specialize in hyper scalping and EMA scalping on really low time frames. So um, Wakar is actually a genius when it comes to this technique called magnet scalping. I'm not gonna go into it now, but it's, it's pretty fire. And then, of course, you know, all my friends and mentors, uh, Bruce Long, not his real name, but uh, you might have seen him on YouTube. He does great exposés on um, scams and frauds. You know, Robert, Derek, Christopher, all of them, great guys. You can find them on Facebook. Jake Coleman is the man with the harmonic plan. And then Pierre uh, does great price action breakdowns every week. So I'm going to include links to all of their Facebook and YouTube pages in the um, resources document that's going to be uploaded to the, my telegram channel and so you'll have links to all of those guys should you want to go ahead and check them out I highly recommend it um, so this is the schedule first part of this webinar is going to be technical explanation I'm going to go through all of the concepts that I use I'm going to give you a list of all the indicators that I use how I set them up then I'm going to delve into a detailed technical explanation of all three you know four really scalping strategies that I use. We're going to talk about scalping on the H1 time frame, which is my surgical scalping. Then we're going to talk about um, M15 and M5 scalping. We've got two different methods. One is called EMA scalping. The other is called hyper scalping. And then of course, I'm going to throw this fourth strategy in that I think is pretty, pretty fire. And I think you guys are going to like it. It's called PEPO. And that just means price in, price out. And uh, it's a real basic strategy, but it's kind of fun if you just want to jump in and out of some trades on a really, really low time frame. And we're going to take a little 10 minute break. Uh, we're going to generate a random date and uh, I'm going to load up the simulator. And then we're going to do some, um, you know, quote unquote live trading where I'm just going to let the market run in real time. We're going to take some trades in real time. Uh, I'm going to show you exactly how I scale in to surgical scalping. And this is really going to help you understand exact because you're going to be confused during the technical explanation. When you see it in action, it's really, it's really going to click for you. Okay. And uh, then we're going to do a 10 minute break and a Q and a. 
Okay, I'm going to try not to keep you guys here all night, but by the end of this webinar, you will be just information overload because I'm going to throw so much stuff at you, but it's really going to open your mind to the possibilities of uh, uh, catching some major pips along with some major dollars. So before we start, okay, um, here's some concepts that you should already know. And, you know, I know most of you already do. This is just a broad blanket statement, especially if you're watching this on YouTube or somewhere online after the fact. But um, you should already know the difference between lot sizes, the difference between um, standard and micro pips, what the major pairs are, the cross pairs, the exotic pairs, what a quote pair is versus a base pair, leverage margin, what's a stop loss, what's a take profit, what's a pending order, like what is the difference between a stop and a limit order, you know, what basically what is a pivot. You know, you don't have to know all of them, but just, you know, what is the concept? What's the spread? What is bullish, bearish, long, short? What does that mean? What is the MT4 trading platform, right? If there's anything that I just named off that you have no idea what I'm talking about, stop here. <laughs> do not pass go. Do not collect $200. I need you to head straight to babypips.com and complete their online free trading academy, okay? Because, I mean, if you're trading in this market, Without any of that knowledge, just just stop. Okay, just stop. Stop right now. <laughs> I, I, I beg of you, just, you need to have at least a basic knowledge of what it is we do. Okay, so, I mean, you don't have to jump out of the webinar, but if you have questions about what I just mentioned, when we're done, you know, go look some of that stuff up and make sure that you know what I'm talking about. Because otherwise, you're going to be kind of lost in these, um, these strategies that I'm going to talk about. Now, some technical concepts that I'm going to be using today are very basic. Very basic, but I'm just going to be utilizing them in a unique way. Um, we're going to be talking about trend lines, channels, uh, horizontal support and resistance, horizontal zones, which are supply and demand zones, EMAs, uh, the different pivot levels and how they're calculated basic candlestick types and patterns, so basically price action, um, top-down analysis, trend bias on a higher time frame, which will give us our major trend, and our trend bias on our lower time frame, which will give us our minor trend. And, and that kind of leads me into the speech. And again, um, if you can't hear me from time to time, I do have, like I said, I'm having internet issues. Don't worry. Um, there's nothing I can do about that right now, but everything is being captured on this recording. You can go back and rewatch this recording at a later date and catch anything that you may have missed. So again, I apologize. I don't know what Cox is doing, but it's definitely not their job. <laughs> okay, so the speech is, and this is my disclaimer, and I'm going to make this real quick, okay? But just like I have to put up the government disclaimer, this is my personal disclaimer when it comes to Forex, okay? You need to honor this craft. And what I mean by that is if you've ever watched Eric Thomas on YouTube, he's famous for giving that you need to want it as bad as you want to breathe uh, inspirational speech. Um, go to YouTube and Google that uh, or s search it up. And right around the 255 mark of that video is what I'm talking about, is that you need to honor this craft if this is what you've chosen to do, okay? Now, there's a difference between inexperience and ignorance, right? One of them I can completely forgive because we've all been there, right? New to trading, we don't know the difference between an indicator and an EA, and there's nothing wrong with that. We all have to start somewhere. But if you've been trading for longer than six months and you don't know the basics, you need to ask yourself how serious you are about trading. Okay, I'm, try I'm not trying to be preachy about it, but this cannot be a hobby for you or it's never going to be anything more than gambling. And you have to be honest with yourself about that. It's your responsibility to educate yourself about Forex. Or in the end, you're just going to end up becoming the next target of any of the hundreds of Forex gurus, quote unquote, who are out there who just want to take your money. That's all. They're just going to fleece you. And 99.99% .99 of the time, like the inside or secret knowledge that they want to sell you is just stuff that all traders already know that have taken the time to learn this craft. 
Like, I'm just gonna give you a quick example. What if I told you that when oil prices go up, you should definitely be selling USD CAD, right? Did that blow your mind? It shouldn't, that you should already know that. Or sh what, what if I told you that you should probably never open a trade between one and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Because that's dead gap, okay? The market's gonna be consolidating, you're not gonna get any volatility or movement. This is all common knowledge. And most common argument I hear about this is, well, I pay to have someone else compile it all for me in one place, or I pay to have someone, you know, search the interwebs for me. It saves me time. That's bull crap. Okay. All of it can be found in places like baby pips. Like I said, I'm a big fan of that, of their uh, free Forex education. I've already, I've gone through that whole thing. It took me a couple weeks, but I'm a big fan of what it is they have to teach. And the videos that we talk about that you pay for, most of them you can find on YouTube as well. Not all of them are great. That's a topic for another day, right? Some of them are just downright crap. But, you know, that's for you to filter through and to figure out on your own, right? So, and it's ironic because some people may be finding this, this video on YouTube someday as well. So don't take what I'm saying as gospel either. You know, take it and go back test it for yourself and figure out if this is what you want to do. Now, does that mean paying for a mentor is wrong? No, that is not what I'm saying. Okay, don't, don't get me twisted. There's nothing wrong with paying an experienced trader for their time to kind of fast track your learning curve, right? You just have to be selective in who you choose. You know, I've done it. I've had many mentors along the way and they've all benefited me in one way or another, where it be, whether it be teaching me something that really, you know, was of value or teaching me, okay, I need to avoid people like that in the, in the future for the rest of my life. But they all teach you something. Any, but at the end of the day, Forex is not easy, right? I don't want to mislead you. Just let's be straight up. Bruce Long, who is a very successful fund manager on his own, um, who, like I, said, I mentioned before, has a series of videos on YouTube, will tell you in most of those videos that um, a mentor can only take you so far. They can only lead you down the path to a certain point. After that point, okay, it's gonna be up to you to develop your own unique trading plan, your own unique trading strategy, and you are gonna be the one ultimately who's gonna to have to pull the trigger and make a trade, right? Nobody's gonna do that for you. I mean, unless you have a, an EA or something, but, but still, it's best that you're, you realize that at the end of the day, you're gonna be the one responsible for your own trading. So, that being said, what I'm gonna show you today is simply a strategy. That's all, okay? It's simply the way that makes the most sense to me on how to enter and exit the market. It is not by no means the be all end all strategy that is finally gonna make you a Forex millionaire. And I, I hope that I haven't tried to give you that impression. But what I am gonna give you are tools that you can take and adapt to fit to your own trading style or your own trading plan. Okay? And you will ultimately have to be willing to put in the long hours that all the rest of us have to do the charts, to do the markups, to sit in front of the, the trading screen, to do the research and figure out how does fundamental analysis and news affect and move the market if you want to be profitable in the long term, and that's what we all want to do. We want to be profitable in the long term. Okay. So what you need to have is a trading plan. And this is my last point, and then we'll get straight to the good stuff, but you need to have a trading plan. Okay. And you need to keep it simple. Uh, the guy that I mentioned earlier, Raquel from um, Wix Don't Lie, he has a great philosophy on trading plans. Keep it simple. He has three main points. I added a fourth one that's just for me personally. But the first one is you need to determine what pair or pairs you are going to trade. You can't trade them all. Okay. And I highly recommend, especially with the strategy, that you only pick one. I know that that is so crazy to most people, but you focus on one pair. For me right now, it's UJ. I just think it's like a scalper's dream, personally. But you take that one pair, you learn it inside and out. How does it move? 
What kind of volatility does it have? What does it do at certain points of the day in the market? Does it always go bullish at a certain time? Does it always go bearish at a certain time? Are there times when it always has pullbacks, right? Know it inside and out. Once you do that, how much more profitable do you think you can be if you only need to take five or 10 pips out of the market a day, right? So that's what I suggest. Learn one or two at the most, three if you're an advanced trader, and then you know, build from there, okay? That's just my suggestion. But know what pairs that you're trading and write them down and stick to those pairs. Two, trade times. This is a job, especially if you're trying to leave another job for this. This will turn into a job because it's your source of income. So don't get it twisted and think that you can just do it anytime you want to from a beach in slippers. You have to set specific times that you will always be in front of the screen trading and decide what those are. For me, right now, I'm always trading Asian and New York session during the London, New York overlap. So I'm in Central Standard Time. I am in front of the computer ready to start trading from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then I wake up around 7, I check the markets, and then I start trading from 8 to about 11, and then I call it a day but I stick to those trading times so that I know the market will do certain things at that time, okay? It's just gonna make life easier for you. And then you need to set a daily goal. How much do you wanna make? Do you wanna earn 5% a week, 10% a week, 15% a week? But you have, to, you have to know, or else how are you gonna calculate how much you're gonna risk and how many lots that you need to trade to reach that goal? I know a lot of us start with the 20 pips a day, 100 pips a week strategy, but if you're using different lot sizes, then you're gonna, always gonna have different returns. If you have, say, a $1,000 account, your goal should be like 5% growth, um, either daily or weekly, and that breaks down to being $50. And if you're only trying to pull $50, let's say a day, so that you're making a 25% return a week, that means you're doubling your account every month, after a year, that really adds up, especially if you're consistent. But if you're only put, needing $50 a day, if you're scalping, that's only five to 10 pips a day, depending on the size of lots that you are willing to use because you're not trying to get 100 pips. So have that goal in mind. And then fourth is going to be a, a trading strategy. This is different from your trading plan. You need to know what strategy that you're gonna to use to implement the plan. Are you gonna scalp? Are you gonna swing? And if so, what are the specific rules for entering, exiting, and taking profit? And if you have to have multiple, then have multiple. Like I'm gonna teach you three different ways to scalp. If you're gonna use those three methods, you need to write down a trading plan or strategy for each of those methods so that you know, okay, well this one's gonna fit me on this trade so I stick by these rules that type of a thing okay so that being said that was it that's my speech try to get it through it as quickly as possible all right so go ahead and screenshot this write this down these are the indicators that um, we use and the time frames that we're going to be working in um, I, like I mentioned I am going to include this presentation in the um, this PowerPoint file in the telegram channel so um, if you can't write it down right now don't worry you'll be able to go back and, and look at it later but the time frames that we work in h4 is going to be our main trend analysis uh, we will do some in daily and weekly um, we will do some also in h1 but mainly we're going to look at h4 just to get an overall bias then h1 is where we're going to be doing our surgical scalping and then M15 and M5 is where we're gonna be doing EMA, hyper, and price in, price out scalping. Now the indicators that I use are uh, standard daily pivots. I have an indicator called pivot SR levels that I use. You can also use just the standard daily pivots on uh, TradingView. Uh, I will include that indicator uh, as well as the other ones in Telegram channel for you guys, so don't worry about that. The EMAs that I use are the 14, the 50, and the 200. Those are just the ones that I find work the absolute best for these strategies. And then the SMAs that I use are the 10, excuse me, and the 21. 
and they work on different strategies and I'll show you as we get into those. And then one other thing I use is a crossover alert arrow indicator. It basically just dings every time uh, I have a specific EMA cross. So I don't have to sit and watch the computer all the time. If I hear a ding go off, I know, oh, okay, I need to start watching this pair and then look for the setup that is going to lead me into an entry. So, and I'll show you what I mean when we get there. So some additional resources. Um, trading view. If you've never used trading view, I highly recommend it. It's much more user friendly for me personally um, than MT4. And it allows you to, uh, you know, save multiple setups and markups. Um, but you like you can do your markups on trading view and then go take your trades on MT4 and then it kind of leaves your charts nice and clean. You can just kind of bounce back and forth between the two. Um, I recommend using a currency strength meter, uh, especially for scalping, because you want to know um, it, that you want to make sure that you're trading a strong currency against a weak currency. If you trade currencies that are about the same strength, you're going to end up in get in consolidation a lot of the times, and then you don't want that. You want a nice, like strong trend movement that's just going to put you into profit within like an hour or two. You just want to get in, get out. Um, now there are some paid ones. Uh, Mark Boardman has one called Apollo. Anna Cooling also has one called Quantum. Um, they are a bit pricey, but uh, uh, they are very nice. I mean, they are very nice. Come not, come not necessary in the slightest, but I just thought I'd give you that information. Um, this will all be included in the resource document. Um, you need to be monitoring high impact news. That is a must. You do not want to be caught in a trade, especially a scalp, um, during any type of high volatility news because our margins are so thin, you will get stopped out extremely easily. Uh, you might hit profit extremely easily too. It can swing both ways. Either way, you need to know when anything's coming down the pipe. Um, and then I have this extension on my Chrome browser called Auto Page Refresh. If you open up Forex Factory to their calendar and then install that extension, you can set it to refresh every five minutes. So it's constantly on the most recent news event. I just, I just find it uh, convenient personally. Um, there's also th something called floating charts. It's not that expensive. What it does allows you to undock charts from MT4 and pull them over to a completely separate monitor. So if you're going to be working in multiple time frames, you can have like the M15 pulled up in your MT4 and then on another screen you can have H1 and just visually bounce back and forth between the two um, instead of having to flip between the two. I don't know. It's, it's personal preference. And then of course, uh, a physical notepad is good to keep right beside the, um, the computer. I like to do it old school when I'm just watching pairs and I'll just chart them, you know, I'll just kind of jot them down as pairs that I'm watching. And then, um, you know, then I kind of eventually filter through them until I find one or two that I actually want to take a trade on. And then I'll focus on that. Oh uh, yeah, mini charts is also very good, very good. Okay, so main concepts that I'm going to be going over today. We're going to talk about EMAs and SMAs because they are our dynamic support and resistance. Okay, those are the, the moving averages that price is going to re either respect or violate, and we are going to take our trades based on those movements. Now, that's the, the textbook definition of a simple and moving average and an exponential moving average. All you need to know is that Simple moving average takes the average over that time period. Um, every day has the same amount of weight in the average, so it's smoother, but it's more affected by price spikes, whereas the exponential um, moves a little more erratic, but it's not affected as much by price spikes because it only it puts more weight on the most recent days. They each have their use, and I'll show you exactly why we use both of them in conjunction when we get to the demo. Um, we have horizontal support and resistance. That is just basic price structure. But we, but we all know that support and resistance lines that price does not stop on a dime. So 
we draw boxes around those lines and we call them supply and demand zones. So that gives us kind of our zone of reversal, our PRZ, price reversal zone. Those of you that like harmonics, <coughs> Natasha, um, know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, because, oh, and the way that I remember it is that the supply zone is up above price. Um, the way that I remember that is the band air supply up in the air, air supply, supply zone. I don't know. It's just, I thought of it one time and it stuck in my head and maybe it'll help you too, because I always used to get them confused before that. Okay. And we're also gonna be talking about trend lines, which simply is just price action. It's just a trend line. It's just a, a support and resistance line that's following either peaks or valleys along price. I mean, it's very basic stuff here. But I just want you to know what we're going to be using in our scalping methods. Uh, we are going to be using pivots. Now, I know that there are a, a, about five or six different types of pivots. For those of you that are familiar with them, um, you, you, we have daily, weekly, Fibonacci pivots, um, Camarillo pivots, and they're all calculated in a different way. What we're going to be using is just your standard daily pivot that's calculated using the, the last trading day's open, high, low, and close. And because of that, it's going to refresh every day uh, upon the opening of the new session. Okay, so we're going to have different price ranges every day, and that's going to help us in setting our take profit levels. And then, of course, price action, you know, you just you need to know what the candlesticks are, what the reversal patterns are. Um, it's just that's going to give us some of our biggest tells when it comes to entries and exits. So it's always good to be a student of price action. Now, here's something that most of you are going to be unfamiliar with. This is a new concept to me as well. It's called Wick Fill. Um, this was something that was introduced to me by Wicks Don't Lie um, on Instagram and on YouTube. Uh, definitely check out his videos. Um, they're, they're really good. But the basis of the concept is that when price is in momentum, that the preceding candles are going to fill the wick that was left by the previous candle because that candle or that wick is going to act as a range of price. Now, if we look at the um, examples down here, okay, the the um, the first example we have bearish momentum downwards, and starting from the very first bearish candle, that wick is filled by the next wick. It fills up the price from the close all the way down to the tip of the previous candle's wick and so on and so forth with each preceding candle filling the, the wick of the previous candle. Now, knowing that price does that much more often than it doesn't, like a lot of the time we see price do that in a trend, we can use that knowledge to our advantage and do small scalps uh, in that wick or price range um, as we're scalping on very, very high time frame or very, very low time frames. So if, if we're in like the M5 time frame, we see a long wick that's about five pips long, we can take that quick five pip scalp. scalp. And with a high lot, that's going to add up really quick. That also means that we can check higher time frames, like an example two. The H1 time frame, we see that that first bullet bearish candle left a very long wick. That wick is more likely than not going to get filled. So we can drop down to the M15 lower time frame and see that if we're trading the M15, we know that we're okay to take a sell, even though it kind of looks like price is retracing back up because the H1 is telling us we've got that whole range of price that's gonna get filled so we can take a, a sell at a nice high price and ride it the whole way down. Okay. So that concept alone uh, is very new to me, but it's a very, very powerful concept that we're going to be using uh, as we do scalping. All right. And then finally, we're going to talk about predictive versus reactive trades. Now, a predictive trade is one where we're looking for EMAs to cross. EMAs are coming towards each other. Mainly the 14 is heading towards the 50, and they're looking to make a cross. And so we're predicting that as an entry point for us to uh, follow a new trend and take a scalp off of that trend. And we also have 
reactive trades, which are our pullbacks on our breakouts. Reactive trade is when we see price pull back to an EMA, then we take a trade based on what price has already done, not on what we're predicting that it will do, as well as breakouts, where if we see price break through an EMA, we take a, a, a position after it's closed because it's broken through that level. Again, EMAs are just dynamic support and resistance. And just like you would take a trade if any price broke through support and resistance, we're going to learn how to take breakout scalps in the very same manner. Now, the pros and cons are that predictive will, will give you more pips because you are getting in on the trend much, much earlier. The, the drawdown is that you have not confirmed that is a new trend and it could turn against you and stop you out. So higher pips, higher risk. Reactive, you're getting in on a confirmed trade and you have a much higher likelihood that you will get your take profit hit, but it's going to have to be a much smaller take profit because you're getting in later on the trend. So it's a bit of give and take. You're going to have to find that, that sweet spot to where you feel comfortable getting in with a certain amount of risk um, and then settling for a certain amount of pips. And again, that's going to be on whatever your trading style is. So it's going to be up to you to decide. Okay. That's all the, uh, that's all of our setup. So let's get straight to what is surgical scalping. This is what you guys definitely wanted to find out about. So what, uh, what we do is we surgically scalp on the H1 timeframe. For this setup, we're going to be using the 14, the 50, and the 200 EMA. And the 21 SMA is going to be kind of like our, uh, like our guardrail, you know, like our early detection system to tell us um, if a trade is even valid enough to take um, or if the trend is turning against us and we need to exit a trade. And I'll show you what I mean uh, in a second. We're going to use H4 as our market bias. And then um, we're going to use our daily standard pivot points as our range so that we know how many pips we can try and shoot for in a take profit. And then you can use crossover error alerts if you want to try and do this on multiple pairs. Um, that way, like I said, you can just let them all go. And as soon as you get a, an alert of a crossover, you can add that pair to your watch list. And then that way you're not having to watch all 28 pairs, uh, if, like if you're back testing this. Okay, so for um, most of Wakara students, this should just be absolute common knowledge. Um, this is market structure at its most basic, H4 time frame. Okay, well, students of Wakara's price action will notice that you know we use um, the highest high, the previous higher high, and then the most relevant higher low to get kind of a, a high low and midpoint that we want to see price uh, travel in between to retrace or break through. But at, at just at the most basic price action or market structure level, what are we seeing? H higher lows, higher highs. Basic. It's not rocket science. This thing's in an obvious uptrend, so we're only looking to buy. It's just that easy. Price is in an uptrend, we're looking to buy. Not looking to sell, we're only looking for buys. Okay, but we only want to trade with the trend because the counter trend is not going to give us the big movements that we want to see. So this is what my chart looks like once everything's added to it and I'm ready to start looking for a trade. This is the H1 time frame. Okay, I've got the 142150 and 200 moving averages on my chart. I've got my daily pivot lines that are already set and they will readjust themselves every new daybreaker because they'll recalculate again. Um, and then we've got these black arrows are the crossover arrows. You can see that they're right above or below as the green 14 EMA crosses the 50, which is like our first signal that we want to start looking for a trade. Okay. So let's talk about what are the rules of trading the surgical scalping method. So what we're looking for is a pullback. What we want to see is that 1450 EMA cross. Then we want to see, and we want to see a strong cross. And what I mean by a strong cross is it needs to look like a T 
or a, a capital X. You know, you don't want to see the EMAs, you know, kind of parallel with each other. And then, the, you know, the 14 just kind of, bleh, just kind of dipping over, you know, you want to see a, it like have a real strong push up towards that 50 EMA and just bust through it because then we know that a really strong trend is starting to form. So we look for that. Once we see that, then we want to see price pull back to the 14 EMA and either touch it or pierce it with a nice long wick. We want to see a pin bar type of a candle. We want the candle to be at least 40% or smaller than the wick. We want the wick to be larger than the body, like a, a nice hammer, a doji, um, you know, a, a shooting star, something like that, right? Um, and we also want to see the, the EMAs start to fan out and stack on top of each other, I guess would be the best term, in the correct order. Like if we go back, see how these are all fanned out? Down, down, let me get my pen because I don't think you can see my cursor, but like down here, they're all kind of consolidating. Um, and I just don't like that color. But here we can see them separate, fan out and give space between them. They're also stacked in the correct order. 50 is above the 200, 21 is above the 50, and 14 is completely on top. That's exactly what we want to see. That's how we know that this is a true trend and that it's not, the price isn't in some type of indecision. And then here's a good example of me not being able to draw a circle. Um, that's like an at sign for, um, for uh, email. No. But that wick right there is a, a really nice example of what we look for as far as it piercing through the 14 EMA. And as you can see, price just shot up and would have hit our take profit almost immediately within an hour or two. So that's what we look for. Um, and then what we want to do is take price to the next pivot level. No further. We're really only looking for 25 pips, 30 at the most. Like if you have a, a long ways to go to the next pivot level, 30 is the maximum, but that has to be a very highly volatile pair. But most of the time we're just going to look for 25 pips. After we enter, um, then we're going to set pending orders at 10, 15, and 20 levels so that once we're finished, we have four open trades. Then either we're going to get our take profit hit or if the 14 and the 21 EMA start to cross each other, trend is changing, we want to exit all positions. Or if price breaks below the 14 EMA, trend is changing, exit all positions. And we set our stop loss directly underneath the confirmation candle that pierced the 14 EMA at the 21 SMA or 15 pips, whichever is more relevant. And I'll show you what I mean when we get to like trade examples. I have a couple slides that'll explain it. Um, and then Another, like a, a secondary uh, stop loss could be the last pivot level that price was at if it's, you know, within 15 pips away, like if it's relevant. But most of the time, you're just going to focus on the 21 SMA. So it not only gives us our stop loss area, but it also gives us our, um, our alert to get out of a trade uh, that trend might be changing. And again, the trades... 25 picks map maximum, 30 only on rare, like only if you see that price has a ways to go before the next pivot level. Um, once you're in a trade, you want to check the currency strength meter. Uh, actually, before you really jump in, make sure, again, that you're trading uh, a strong versus a weak pair. And then make sure that there's no high impact news coming down the pipe and, uh, or the pipe, either way. And, uh, and then you should be good. So here's some good examples of what I'm talking about. I'll give you a little more visualization of um, the method. So an EMA cross is our first example. You see how that's a really strong cross. It dips down and then pushes up 
really suddenly through the 50 EMA. That's going to tell us that our trend has started to change. Then we have um, the EMA is fanning out, and we can see that it's in an uptrend. So we see that separation. And then we have our wick touch, which is price pulling back and getting rejected at the 14 EMA, which is our dynamic support and resistance. And as you can see, it then went on to um, it went on to do about 36 pips, but it would have hit your take profit within three hours, which is pretty nice, especially when you consider that we'll be pulling 55 pips off of that move. It's a 25 pip move. We will be taking 55 pips out of that move. And let me show you how we're going to do that. And this is one of the real strong points of this method. So like I said, when we enter, we are going to set four trades. One is going to be a market order upon the close of this confirmation candle. Okay. The second one, so right here, after this candle closes, we're going to get in. Going to set our stop loss, and this is what I mean by at the SMA, the 21, right underneath the confirmation candle or 15 pips, whatever's closer. Then we're going to set market pending orders, not market, but pending orders, buy or sell stops at 10 pips higher, 15 pips, and 20 pips. All of them will have the same take profit, 25 pips. Okay, so you're getting 25 pips off the initial move, 15 off the second, 10 off the third, and five pips off the fourth. So you add that all together, that's 55 pips off of a 25 pip move. Because the, the closer that it gets to this take profit, the higher the probability that it is gonna hit that take profit and you're just adding in positions. So that begs the question then, well, what does our lot management and risk size look like? Oh, and here's what it looks like on, uh, on a chart. Everything's all set up. Um, so we uh, entered here. This was our pin. Entered here. Put our, put our pendings in, all three. Price went up. Boom. Take profit hit. 55 pips. Stop loss down here. Uh, you could do it on the EMA. Uh, here's where I was talking about where the pivot could be relevant as well. You could put a tighter stop loss right on that pivot. Uh, as you can see, neither one of them ever were in danger of being hit. It's not always going to be like that, but just in this example, uh, it worked out beautifully for us. Okay, and we'll have more examples of those as we go along. Okay. Now, if we're going to talk about how many pips we're going to get, we also have to talk about the worst case scenario, and we have to plan our risk accordingly. And the worst case scenario, when I talk about that, is what happens if every single pending order gets hit, but it doesn't hit the take profit and instead reverses, like on a, this long wick, and then goes and hits our stop loss. All right. It's very rare that all four of them get hit, but it, you have to assume that it might happen uh, once in a while, right? Um, and, okay, now the stop loss for these pending orders, we'll talk about that in just a second because it's going to depend on whether you're being aggressive or conservative, and we have risk management plans for both because not everybody likes to trade the same way, so I've developed uh, methods for your high risk traders as well as your very conservative traders. So when I say worst case scenario though, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about every single order getting activated and all of them getting stopped out. Okay. And because it's a possibility, we have to take it in consideration. So we've talked about scaling in our entries for a 25 pip take profit. Um, so we have our initial and our three pending, four total. So a conservative lot, a conservative money management plan would be 
all lots being equal. So in this example, all four of our entries use the same lot size. They use a mini lot. I, I hate saying a 10 cent lot because that's not what professional traders say, but if that's your vernacular, that's fine. 10 cent, so we used four 10 cent lots, four mini lots, okay? Um, if we add up all of our take profit in pips, that comes out to 55 pips if we add 25, 15, 10, and five. So 55 times a dollar a pip is gonna be $55. That's what we would win if we won a trade. An aggressive lot size is gonna be where we increase, or aggressive money management is where we increase the lot size at each pending level because in theory, each pending order is, has a higher probability of hitting our take profit because it's closer to our take profit. So what you can do is increase it in this example by one mini lot every pending order. So our entry is one, the second is two mini lots, three mini lots, and then four mini lots um, you know, in that order. So if we did that, it's still 25 pips that we're gonna be making. The pips will not change, but the amount of money that we're making is gonna change because we're taking a greater risk. When you add all that up, it's gonna come out to about 100, and, well, not about, it's gonna come out to $105. Um, well, yeah, about, because it's gonna depend on the exchange rate of the currency that you're trading. It's not always exactly a dollar a pip just because you're trading a mini lot. But it's gonna be close to that. It's gonna be close to $105. So that's aggressive. So we know how much we can make. Let's talk about how much we can lose. So a conservative risk management plan, and this will answer your question about what are the stop losses. So in a conservative risk management plan, you set all the orders, including the penning orders, to be at the, um, at the entry price once price reaches, uh, what the pending orders are gonna be set at your entry level and then your entry, um, your entry order, you're gonna move that stop loss up to break even at 10 pips. So your first order is going to just break even your other three are gonna take 20, 15, and 10 pip losses. So add all that up at a dollar a pip, you're gonna lose $45. So a conservative risk management has a 45 to 55 loss to win ratio. It's about one to one, not great, but it's the percentage of wins versus losses that's going to eventually you know, make the difference. Now, the aggressive risk management plan, because we're, because we're taking a greater risk, we have tighter stop loss on that. For that, same with your entry order. Once it hits 10 pips in profit, you move it up to break even. All the others have a 10 pip stop loss, trailing stop loss, including your entry. So what we're doing is with a conservative plan, we're giving the market more room to breathe, okay? But we're taking a little bit of a, a greater risk as far as pips are concerned. With the aggressive, we have a much tighter stop loss because we are trying to protect our capital as much as possible. You don't want a, a, a four mini lot position to go all the way back down to that original stop loss you want it to get cut off as soon as possible. The problem is you're gonna not give the market very much room to breathe if you do that, but you have to, or else your loss is gonna be greater than what you risk. So, or what you, what you, what you could possibly win. And if that's the case, you'll always end up in the losing category. So those are the, draw, those are the pros and cons. You can use conservative, you, you make less money, but you also lose less money and you give the market room to breathe. The aggressive, you have much tighter stop loss so the 
you're going to choke your trade out before it really has a chance to move around. So even though your risk to reward is better, like 80 to 105 is a better risk to reward, you're going to lose more trades than you're going to win because the market doesn't have room to move. Okay. So that's the only way that I've found that you can work it without it just eventually bankrupting your, your account. So it's up to you how you want to proceed, but those are the numbers that I crunched as far as risk to reward. Okay. Let's see here. So that is, that is surgical scalping. I told you I'm going to be blowing through this really quick. Um, and a lot of this is going to get cleared up. I know it's a lot to take in at once, but stick with me. When we go through the live trading, it's going to clear a lot of it up for you. And then, of course, we'll do a Q&A at the end of it. But I really got to get, get moving because I don't want you guys to be here all night. Okay. So the M15, M5 scalping, we have EMA scalping, and then we have price in, price out scalping. For these, we're going to set it up on the, either the M15 or the M5, totally your choice, because uh, it works on both. We use the 10 SMA, the 14, 50, and 200 EMAs. And then we use the H1 market structure as our bias. And we also use the concept of wick fills because we are doing really small scalping. We're doing five to 10 pips with really high lots. So here's our market structure on the H1. Same one we looked at earlier, only on the H1, it's a more expanded view. This one, same thing. You've got your supply and demand zones that price is gonna move in and out of. and ping pong in between and as it breaks through one it's going to then either retest or continue on to the next one and that's how we know that, you know if we're going to be looking for a buy or if we're going to be looking for a sell because on the, the 15 and the 5 you can have a trend bias but realistically you're probably going to be taking trends going in both directions or trades going in both both directions because you're looking for really small movements you don't need a big trend movement but it's also it's also nice to know what direction the market's moving in so you can have a little more confidence on one side than you will on the other here's a setup 10 50 200 14 EMA um, I will say that trades are a lot stronger when they're on the correct side of the 200 buys are uh, much stronger when these EMAs are on top of the 200 EMA Cells are a lot stronger when they're underneath the 200, but it's not necessary, um, and it's not necessarily the case every time. It's just kind of an added confirmation that, you know, you are on the right side of the market. But you can scalp it in either direction. You're probably just going to have smaller returns, but you will still get some good scalps out of it. Um, here we see both um, – this right here is the EMA cross, where EMA is going to – cross the the 14 and the 50 are going to cross and we can do sorry two types of entries on this and i'm going to show you what i mean in a second but we can take a scalp right here when price breaks through the 50 or we can take it here when price when the ema officially crosses and a candle prints and then we take our entry right here. And then our stop loss is going to be either five pips up or the previous candle wick, either high or low, depending on a, a buy or a sell. And this one is right in line with the 200 EMA, so we're getting added support on that. And we stay in the trade by opening two positions. When it hits five pips, we close out one position. And then we just let the other position ride all the way until it breaks back inside the 10. And remember how I said the 10 is going to be kind of our early warning indicator of a trend change. That's where you, you can exit there or you can see if price breaks through the 14. A lot of times the 14 is going to keep price inside of it. Price is going to respect the 14 and it may continue to keep dropping. And then you can just wait until it breaks through the 14. 
again, it's up to you what you want to do. It's just something that you're going to have to play around with. But at this point, once you've closed your five pip position and you've moved your stop loss up to break even, it's a free trade. So, I mean, you're free to take your profit anytime you want to because it's just free pips. That's why we open up two positions, okay? And that's part of our uh, trading plan is that we use two positions for that exact purpose. So here are the rules. You're gonna determine the trend bias on the H1 using the market structure. Again, it's just for knowledge. The 14 and the 15 EMA are stronger when they're above or below the 200. We just covered that. For EMA scalping, um, we're either gonna do an aggressive entry once the 50 EMA is violated, or we're gonna do a confirmed entry on the 14 and 50 cross. And this is what I talked about earlier. This is a callback to predictive versus reactive trades, okay? Um, the predictive is the 50. Even though we have the reaction to the 50 being violated, it's really more of a prediction that the 40 and the 50, 14 and the 50 are gonna eventually cross and give us a new trend. The reactive trade is when they actually do cross and we know, okay, this is a new valid trend and you know, we're, we're good to let these positions ride. Now, price in, price out scalping, this is a fun one. Okay, I threw this in because I, I've been testing this strategy and if you like a lot of action, if you like taking like trades on the five minute chart, you're gonna like this one. It's very simple. When price breaks through the 14 EMA and then recrosses it, like let's say it's in a downtrend. If price breaks up through the, four, through the 14, closes, and then comes back out and continues down, you enter and you take like five pips out and then let a second position run until it recrosses like through the 10 again. Kind of like what we looked at a second ago. It's actually very effective. Like you'll, you'll break even a lot. So make sure you take the spread into account so you don't go into a negative. But when you finally do get a runner that goes for a good 15 or 20 pips, I mean, that, I mean that, that'll, that makes your whole day right there. So trades, you're only looking for five to 10 pips maximum. Five on most pairs, 10 on a volatile pair like the beast, you know, like GJ or GN, you know, pairs that move 200 pips in a day. Then, um, like I said, once that position, once you've secured your first position of five to 10 pips, you bring your other, you bring your stop loss to break even on your second position and you just let it run. And of course, be very mindful of high impact news just as within any trade. So here we go. Here's some entry examples. So we've got, um, this is our cross. And I, can, I cannot draw a circle to save my life. So we've got our breakthrough here on the 50 EMA. So this would be our entry on the second candle. We, we need to wait for this candle to close and it needs to be um, at least mostly above the 50. We want to see that nice clean break. Um, and then this is 10 pips right here or five, depending on the, I don't remember what pair this is that I took the screenshot. So you close this position and you let the other one run. Now the confirmed entry is on the cross. This candle is our confirmation candle. Um, so this is where we would uh, enter right here and go to our take profit of five or 10 pips. That's just horrible drawing. Um, and then here we close out one position and we let the other one run, All right? And oh, so let me show you, so where do we let it run to? All right. That's going to be our next example. We let it run all the way until price moves back inside um, either the 14 or the 10. Completely up to you. I find the 10 to be a little more predictive as far as it's going to go in eventually. You might as well take a couple extra pips now, then take the chance, 
But if you, I mean, if you want to let it run again, free pips, totally free pips at that point in time, because we're using very high lot size. And by the time you're at this point to where you're at break even and you're, you've got maybe like uh, five mini lots or like a, like a standard lot or like maybe um, like Natalie has like 10 lots going. <laughs> um, I mean, there's no harm in just letting it keep going until you hit 20, 30 pips or whatever. And this is what I was talking about where you get a runner that just, just keeps following that 14, just keeps going up or down. Once it finally closes, you know, it's money. It's money. I see my internet connection is a little unstable right now, so please forgive me if my voice goes in and out on the webinar. Okay, so here is an example of price in, price out. Okay. And again, you're going to break even a lot on these, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, because when you do finally catch a good one, it'll, it'll make up for the frustration of breaking even on the last three and you're not losing anything, uh, especially if you catch a good trend. So here price breaks through the 14, it, you know, it breaks out. So you, it goes up, comes down, you enter. Okay, stop loss about here. Or you just leave it maybe a little bit above the 14 and put a mental stop loss and watch price as it, you know, it gets rejected and then it eventually comes and comes, closes in here. Okay, break even. It comes up, it comes down, breaks through. Awesome. Take another entry. You would definitely have five pips right here. Let the other one run. You know, just as long as it doesn't close above the 14, you're golden, comes down, comes down, comes back in, you know, maybe, maybe you pull two or three pips off of that, you know, then you get another break, enter in on this doji, this one, you got a runner, right? It comes down, it comes down, exit a position around five pips, keeps going, 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 and then here, great example of the 10 EMA is going to give you a little better heads up that price is changing direction. And so you go ahead and exit and then you've got all this. And with the high lot size, that's going to add up real quick. If you're a fan of price action, um, you should have already known this right here was a reversal pattern, but not everybody's a fan of price action. And if you are doubting yourself in the heat of the moment, this cross of the EMA is um, basically a no-brainer. You see it cross, you get out. There's no guesswork to it. And it's kind of what I try to do is take all the guesswork out of this. And that's kind of why I like this because either it's, either it's on one side of the EMA or it's not. And you just take your positions accordingly. Okay. So that's price in, price out. Um, risk management. We take two positions. Once we hit our take profit, we close a position. We let the second one ride. Close all your positions completely. If it breaks through the 14 EMA, um, you can use a mental stop loss kind of at that level uh, because a lot of times it'll, it'll wick, but it won't close above. So it's completely up to you. Move everything to break even once you're five pips in profit. And then since we're using higher lot sizes, because we're only going for five pips, we can use these very large lot sizes without fear of it blowing our account, but you have to adjust your stop loss in the same manner. So let's take a 1K account as an example. If, you're only, if your trading plan is that you will only risk 5% of your account per trade, and you should have that already designated, then that means that you only can risk $50. So you do the math. Two open positions is, in essence, one standard position. Two, we're talking about two five mini lot positions add up to one whole standard lot. So at $10 a pip, you can only go five pips into the hole before, you can only go five pips down before you hit your, your risk, 
level. So that's how you calculate it out. But if you're constantly moving your stop loss to break even, you know, then obviously uh, it'll take a while before you hit that. And of course, if you go into profit, you have extra room um, for market movement. So, and then people scalping is pretty much the same. Um, you can play, like I said, you put your stop loss kind of at the, the, the top of that last wick that broke through the EMA uh, that you then entered after. I find that's a good place. Usually that stop loss won't get hit, um, but it's up to you. Play around with it. Find what, what suits your trading style best. The example 1K for risk management is going to be exactly the same as the last one. So really no difference in that. And then last, of my, last is hyper scalping. Now I'm not a master of this yet. I highly, highly recommend you go to Wix Don't Lie YouTube page or Instagram page. This is his bread and butter. And he has a lot of great videos on um, how to trade uh, hyper scalping. But basically it's just based off of horizontal support and resistance zones or, or I mean lines and supply and demand zones and you just you buy it support you sell it resistance that's it I mean it's it's very simple um, wick fills give you uh, your confirmation as far as how much you think you can pull off of a scalp and then uh, you can use a trend line to make sure that you're you know if you're in a trade that it's not turning against you so let me show you some examples of what I'm talking about. Now, the rules for this are um, use support and resistance, buy at support, sell at resistance, very simple. You can use the 10 SMA as confirmation. Like as long as price is above or below it, you know that if you're in a buy or a sell that you are on the um, probably on the right side of the market. Uh, there's also a technique called EMA magnets. For that, I recommend you check out EMAs Don't Work, his Instagram page. Dude is a genius. His name is Wakar as well. He is a genius when it comes to using pullbacks on EMAs on the five minute and sometimes 15 minute time frame. Because the concept is when price pulls away from the 14, you know how we've seen it respect the 14? It also is acting like a magnet it's pulling price back to the 14 and also the 50 price tends to return to those EMAs the further it gets away. Like it, it always has to come back to it. So if you can catch uh, the reversal of like some long wicks to the bottom or to the top and catch that um, counter trend trade movement, we could call it back up to the EMA, you can do some pretty nice scalping. It takes some sniper-like reflexes, I'm telling you. It's not for everybody. I'm still trying to get that part of it down, but it's very fascinating. Um, but that fits right in with our strategy of high lots and pip and dip. I know a lot of you saw my, um, my uh, results that I posted in the last couple of days where I, I took a $100 uh, off of five pip movement. That's what we're talking about. You know, if you put a standard on uh, like two five pip movements or a 10 pip movement, that's a hundred bucks, you know, right off the top. You can also lose a hundred dollars, but if you're winning more than you're losing, obviously, you know, once you get really good at it, it can really stack up quick. Uh, five pips, especially on the M5 time frame, five pips, really all you want to look for. Um, let let second position run, bring your stop loss to break even, and just make sure that you're not in any high impact news. All right, we're getting close to the end, so hang in there with me. This is simple top-down analysis, weekly, daily, and H4. We're just looking at candlestick patterns. And the candles on the weekly are telling me that this pair right here is bullish. We drop down to the daily, bullish. We drop down to the H4, also very bullish, but we see wicks to the high, so it could be possibly reversing that trend or pulling back sometime soon. But for right now, everything is showing us bullish momentum. I mean, just keep it simple. This is not rocket science. We're just looking to see what the trend is currently. Now, here's a, just a basic example of support and resistance lines. 
what we're looking for are areas where price has consolidated or got rejected. So we see a little bit of rejection here, broke through but came back in. We see consolidation through here, okay? We see a little bit of consolidation here, broke through, came back. We see it almost come through here. We see it get rejected multiple times here. Comes down, comes back up. Another rejection, and it takes a big candle to break through that. And then it comes back for our favorite thing, which is a nice last kiss goodbye before taking off to the moon. Same with this uh, support line. A lot of consolidation here, consolidation here. Took a big candle to break it here and another big candle to break it here. And as it broke through, this was resistance. Boop. Now it's support. This was resistance till it broke through. Now it's support. I guess it's dollar sign support. So once it breaks through, I mean, we're, we're just looking to buy. It's very simple in that aspect. There's not, not a whole lot to it. And like I said, if you're interested in this type of um, hyperscalping, uh, check out those videos on, on YouTube because he does um, the same type of live trading uh, demo sessions. You know, I say, you know, live trading, but through a simulator. So if we drop down to a little bit lower time frame, this is what that same movement looked like. So now we have this consolidation drawn out as a box, right? And it's become a zone. So price is consolidated in this area. So this is now a, support, a demand zone. So we would look for price to get rejected in this zone. We also have this resistance line up here that got tapped once, twice, broke through, came right back in, three times a lady. Now we're looking to take it all the way back down to this demand zone. We know it has, price has that potential. It breaks through the 50 right here, so we know this is a good entry. We see the EMA cross right here, so we know this is another good entry on this pullback. And we know that this is our range from here to here that we can take price either up or down. Then this is where the trend line is going to come in where we use this uh, to know that once it kind of breaks through this, you know, maybe we're looking to buy now, but it's just going to depend on what we see in the market. These, we use all of our tools. Whoops. Need to erase that. Um, because these scalps are very quick on very low time frame. So we're just looking to get in, get out. We just want to be with the trend at that current moment. So you can take it down when it gets rejected. You can take buys back up. When you see it start to get rejected again at, a, at another level, you can take it back down to this demand zone again. Very simple. And again, check out his videos if you want to know uh, more about how that works. And then we can also incorporate our wick fill strategy into that. So this is in that same area. This was the, uh, the M15 where price had gone in and out here. It broke through, but then it came right back in and then got rejected. Pin bar got rejected. On the one hour time frame, these four candles here uh, is this candle. Then these four candles here is this candle. These four are this candle that gives us this long wick. That's what we look to get filled because we know that most often than not that price will fill that range that has already previously established. So we get this here, which is what is known as a liquidity wick, where price comes up to grab like pending buy orders, 
and then goes right back down in the same direction that it was going. And that's what we see here. We see price go up, which is what we would have entered here. You take a little bit of drawdown and then price goes right back down and we get this 15 pip movement. And if we wanted to stay in until price closed, we could have also got this extra little bit here. But scalping is not about being greedy. Scalping is about having a, a, a set plan to just get in, get out, and be satisfied with whatever you get and not think about, I, I wish I could have got that trade or I wish I could have got those extra pips. You're not trading the peso, okay? Those are nacho pips. <laughs> those are nacho pips. So you just let go of any woulda, coulda, shoulda trades that you may have or might have or a man if I would have been able to trade Brexit, you know, you know, get out of here with all that. You got your 10 pips, you, walk, you shut down the computer and you walk away to trade again tomorrow, a winner, okay? You made your money, now go spend your time doing the things that you enjoy. Okay, that is the, the just as quickly as I can run through the technical analysis part of it. We're going to take a 10 minute break and what I've got here is I've got, this is one of my favorite sites, it's called random.org and I'm going to, um, I'm going to run it and we're going to, uh, it's going to give us a, a bunch of random dates and then we'll just pick one at random, there it is, pick one of these dates at random. Um, jump in on the simulator and I'm going to run through about a week of surgical scalping trades. And then we're going to do a couple days of the EMA, um, EMA trades. And then we're going to do maybe a day of PEPO trades. And I'm going to see if I can break the record that I set at the last webinar. Um, well, I'd like to at least make sure I make some money. <laughs> That's first and foremost. I don't want to go negative, uh, which I don't think is going to happen. But we're going to see if we can break that $3,000 mark that I set at the last webinar. So um, hit me up in the chat with uh, just whichever random date you think I should jump in on. And let's meet back here at uh, 35 after, whatever time zone that you're in. 35 after. So go use the bathroom, go get a drink of water. We're gonna do maybe about 45 minutes of trade so I can show you exactly how these things work. And then after that, we'll do take one more bathroom break and do an, a live Q&A and I will answer any and all questions that you have. Yes, Moreno, thank you for reminding me. Uh, I can always count on Moreno to uh, let me know that I need to give away free shit. <laughs> hold on, I'm just joking. Hold on, let me stop this recording real quick.